So the, the equations, the chemical equations that I showed you in the previous section, um, many of them had a problem with them. So that, that's sort of the title of this slide. There's a problem with the chemical equations, at least some of them that we were discussing on the, on the previous section. Um, you know, and, and there's always got to be a problem, otherwise the, the teacher basically doesn't have anything to talk about and there's nothing new for you to learn. So this is basic, this is sort of going to be a common theme as the course progresses. There's a problem, someone tried to fix it by coming up with a convention in chemistry. So the best way to, to deal with understanding this problem, and it's possible that many of you already know what the problem is and you've been exposed to this. Others of you will not have heard of it before. The best way to discuss this problem and understand it is with a, re a story that's related to the problem. So here's the story. Imagine that I'm going to have a cookout. My wife and I are going to have a cookout, and I come home and I say, we're going to have a cookout. I've got all of the ingredients ready. I have two hamburger patties. Here they are. That's what the two stands for in front of the patties. I've got two slices of bread. I'm going to heat them up on the grill. That's what the triangle is there for. And we are going to um, have two hamburger patty sandwiches when I'm done cooking. Now, I'm going to pause here for a minute, and you can pause the video, and think about what's wrong with this. For some of you, it might be painfully obvious, but I'll pause for a second. So the problem is that I don't have enough slices of bread. I, how many slices of bread do I need? I need four slices of bread, because I need two slices um, for every patty to make the sandwich that I'm, that I'm showing over here. So basically, my wife looks at me and tells me I'm crazy, and she tells me to go back to the store and go back until you have at least four slices of bread, right? So now here's, this is basically an equation for how to make two hamburger patty sandwiches. At the beginning, it was wrong. At the beginning, I had the number two here, and I said two patties plus two slices of bread is going to make two sandwiches, and that's not right. The correct answer is that two patties plus four slices of bread is going to make two sandwiches. It turns out that, well, one way of thinking about this is that this equation, this recipe, is balanced now. I have the right amount of ingredients, and I will make the correct amount of products. It turns out that the same types of problems come up with chemical equations. And some of them were coming up in the previous section. We just weren't talking about them. We were ignoring them for the moment. So what I mean by that is that chemical equations have to be balanced in the same way that that recipe for making hamburger patties has to be balanced. Hamburger patty sandwiches has to be balanced. The, the best example for showing this is, is this equation here. And I showed you this in the previous section. I'm, I'm omitting the stuff about gas, gas, and liquid over here just because it's a little bit too much detail and it's not relevant here. Um, I could even eliminate the triangle here because it's not really relevant. So let's just focus on the formulas. If, if you read this equation literally, this equation is basically saying I need one set of H2s because the number one is implied in front of this molecule. One set of H2s plus one set of O2s will make one set of waters. If you draw that in cartoon fashion, it looks like this. Uh, here's my one set of H2s, the two hydrogen atoms stuck to each other. Here's my one set of O2s, two oxygen atoms stuck to each other. And they will make, uh, according to this equation, they will make one set of water, which is H2O. And hopefully you can see the problem here. The problem here is that I started with two hydrogen atoms. I ended with two hydrogen atoms. I started with two oxygen atoms, but I only ended up with one. So if you were a chemist and you went up to another chemist and you showed that chemist this equation over here, the chemist would basically look at you and say, where'd the other oxygen go? I don't know where it went. You're not accounting for it. In the same way that my wife might send me back to the grocery store saying, you don't have enough bread. You're, you're basically telling me you're going to make uh, two sandwiches, but you only have two slices of bread and you need four slices. Here it's kind of the opposite problem. I have two oxygen atoms that I'm starting with, but I'm only ending up with one oxygen. So where did the other one go? There, there's a, a way of fixing these types of equations, um, and the, the way of fixing them is called balancing an equation. What you basically say is, you say, look, I started with two oxygen atoms, I'm only ending up with one. How can I fix this without altering 
um, the molecules in my recipe. In other words, I can't just say plus and then the letter O over here to make it balance. I have to assume that the chemist was competent enough to know that they started with H2, they started with O2, and they ended with water. And they didn't end with anything else. Those are the only ingredients that they had. And so what you do is you basically say, well, why don't you say that we actually made two water molecules? Doesn't that fix the problem? And kind of it does, but kind of it doesn't. The way that it does is, now we start with two oxygen atoms, and we do end with two water molecules. And the way that you would write that in equation form is to say two water molecules, you would say two in front of the formula for the water molecule. So here we're saying, look, we started with two oxygen atoms, and now we're ending with two oxygen atoms. So everything should be great. However, we have made a new problem for ourselves. The new problem is that in our equation now, we start with two hydrogen atoms, which is one hydrogen molecule, and we end with four hydrogen atoms. So we fixed one thing, we fixed the oxygen problem, but we made a new problem for ourselves. We can't start with two, two hydrogen atoms and end up with four. So there's a very simple way of fixing that. The way of fixing that is to say that you started with double the amount of H2 molecules. In other words, we started with two H2 molecules. You would write that with the number two in front of the H2. And now, in cartoon form, we are starting with four hydrogen atoms. We're ending with four hydrogen atoms. We are starting with two oxygen atoms, and we are ending with two oxygen atoms. So this is roughly equivalent to what we did on the previous slide with the hamburgers. Um, the original equation, as it was written, was like this, and it was saying 1H2 plus 1O2 makes 1H2O. What you have to realize, and what students sometimes have difficulty understanding, is that this equation is almost correct, but it's not quite correct. What it is, is all of the ingredients are correct. It's just that the amounts of the ingredients are incorrect. So we have to tinker with the amounts of the ingredients, and that's all we get to tinker with. We only get to change the numbers in front of each formula. I get to change the number in front of here if I want to, in front of here if I want to, and in front of here if I want to, until all of the ingredients that I start with match all of the ingredients that I end up with. And so we did it this way. We basically said, look, we must have actually produced two water molecules, and we must have actually started with two H2 molecules. So the original equation, as, as it was written, was almost correct, but slightly incorrect. And the correct way of writing the equation is to say that you started with two H2s mixed with one O2 uh, could produce two H2Os. So that, that's basically a more accurate description of what happened um, in your chemical reaction. So if this is confusing you, and, and it might be, it, it's a little bit of a weird topic, um, for me, it, it really the best way to think about this is as a recipe. In other words, every formula here, all of the formulas shown are, you can think of them as ingredients, and it, uh, ingredients in a recipe. And you don't get to change the ingredients, and you don't get to change the final thing that you make. You only get to change the amounts of the ingredients, and the amounts of the ingredients are shown um, with by the numbers in front of each molecule or in front of each ingredient. So if that helps you um, in thinking about how to balance equations, uh, th that's how I would think about it. So a couple um, of additional pieces of information. In these reactions, the prefix, the prefix is the number that comes in front of each molecule. Um, the prefix is basically the relative amount of each substance. This, again, just to emphasize, this 2 does not necessarily mean two H2 molecules, even though I drew it this way. All it really means is twice as many H2 molecules as there are O2 molecules. And there are, in this case, there are two here, and there are one here. But this two could mean two dozen, and then this, the one that's implied here, would mean one dozen. Or this could be two billion, and this would be one billion. Or, again, just to drive this point home, because it's going to show up in a few slides, um, this could mean two moles, and this, uh, the implied one here, would be one mole. So all that two is telling you is that I have two sets of H2s, there they are, mixed with one set of O2s, can make 
two sets of H2Os. That's what the prefix tells you. And again, although we mentioned this in the previous section, if there's no prefix in front of the molecule, if there's no number in front of the molecule, the number one is implied. And that is going to show up uh, a fair amount in this course as well. So if it helps to draw these cartoon diagrams of what 2H2O means and what 1O2 means, then by all means do it. Um, in the end, though, you may have to uh, actually sort of become comfortable with looking at a formula and saying that H2 means that there are two hydrogen atoms and that the two in front of here means that there are two sets of H2s. And so 2H2 will tell you, as you practice this, as you become more comfortable with this, 2H2 will tell you that there are four hydrogen atoms being talked about here. And that's true for, for all of these formulas. You'll, you'll eventually become comfortable with looking at the formula, looking at the number that's in front of the formula, and figuring out how much of each atom you're talking about. So here are the rules uh, summarizing what you need to do to balance chemical equations, or what you're allowed to do. Um, the, fir the first rule is basically you need the same number of each type of atom on the left and the right side of the arrows. So if you start with four hydrogen atoms on the left side of the arrow, you need to end with four hydrogen atoms on the right side. If you start with two hydrogen atoms on the left, you need to end with two, uh, two hydrogens on the right. Um, and, and that, so you're not allowed to gain or lose any material. The second rule is that you can only change the amount or number of each type of substance. And this is basically going back to what I said about the ingredients. You can only change the amount of each ingredient. So you can only change the number in front of each formula um, in your chemical equation. You don't get to change the type of each substance in, in your equation. So what I often see is this um, when I ask students to balance a chemical equation at the beginning of the course. Um, if I say, look, here's an unbalanced chemical equation, you start with 1H2, you start with 1O2, and you make 1H2O. Can you balance it, please? And the student looks at this, and they say, look, I'm starting with two hydrogens, I'm ending with two hydrogens, so that's all good. I'm starting with two oxygens, I'm only ending with one oxygen, and I need to end with two because I started with two over here on the left. So why don't I do this? Why don't I put the number two in front of here? And I basically am saying I start with 1H2, 1O2, and it turns into H2O2. Now, this is balanced as far as the students are concerned, and it's balanced as far as I'm concerned. However, this is not water. This is not the formula for water. The formula for water is H2O. It's not H2O2. So what the student has basically said is that I started with H2 and O2, and I didn't want to make water, I actually wanted to make this substance over here. And so that's not allowed. You don't get to, you don't get to uh, pick what type of materials you start with, and you don't get to pick what type of materials you end with. If I tell you that you end with water, you have to actually use water in your formula. You don't get to change it to some other chemical, um, which H2O2 is. It's a different chemical. So that, that's something to keep in mind. Another way of thinking about it is, if a chemist came up to you and showed you this equation, the way it's shown here, which is not balanced, um, even though the chemist screwed up in, in not balancing the equation, you have to assume that the chemist was competent enough to know that he or she produced water, that he or she used O2 gas, and he or she used H2 gas. And so, Operating under that assumption, you don't get to change this to H2O2 because H2O2 is not water. You have to assume the, chem the chemist was good enough to know that they actually made water. And then the only things you're allowed to change are the numbers, again, in front of each molecule. You can change the number that's implied here, you can change the number that's implied here, and you can change the number that's implied here. Um, balancing equations uh, re requires a fair amount of practice, especially if you're not familiar with it. So th that's really what you should do. If, the, if you're uncomfortable with, with doing these types of things, you should practice. And I'll give you a few practice problems now. Um, here's the first one. And you can pause the video and work on it uh, if you want for a few minutes, or it might take you less time, might take you more time. Um, you can pause now, and I will go through how I do it. <clears throat>
So the way that I do it is the following. I typically make a table, and this is the top row of the table. I, I write an L, the letter L, for left side of the arrow, and I write an R for right side of the arrow. And the idea is that you're supposed to make sure that each of the elements, that you have the same number of each element on the left side and the right side. And what I do is I typically go one by one through each element and see if I have the correct number on the left side and the right side. So this is the first element that we have in this equation. It's magnesium. So I write uh, the symbol for magnesium in the next row. And basically, I start asking questions. How many magnesiums do I have on the left side of the arrow? Well, looks like I have one. So I write the number one over here. Then I say, how many magnesiums do I have on the right side of the arrow? And again, it looks like I have one magnesium. So I write a one there. And I compare the two, and I say, well, I started with one on the left. I ended with one on the right. Everything looks balanced. So then I go to the next element in the equation. That's hydrogen over here and I make a row for hydrogen, here it is, and I ask the same questions. How many hydrogens on the left side of the arrow? Looks like there's one. How many hydrogens on the right side of the arrow? Here it looks like there's two because the, the subscript to the right of the hydrogen here means that there are two hydrogen atoms. So I write a two here. Then you basically look at this and you say they're not balanced. I start with one hydrogen atom, I end up with two. So I need to balance this, or I, I should at, at the very least try to balance it. This one is pretty straightforward, and if you remember from what I was saying before, the only thing that you're allowed to change is the amount of each molecule shown here. So you can only change the number in front of the HCl, in front of the magnesium, in front of the MgCl2, or in front of the H2. However, what we need to do is we need to make sure that we start with 2 and end with 2. And so we need to turn this 1 into a 2. And the only way that we can do this and still follow the rules that I described uh, a few seconds ago is we have to put a number 2 here. In other words, we have to double the amount of HCl in our reaction. And so I'm going to put a number 2 there. You can watch for the fancy animation. There's the number 2. And if I put a number 2 here, it means that I'm going to have, you can think of it as meaning I'm going to have two HCLs. Because of that, this number is also going to turn into a 2. So now, by putting this 2 here, by doubling the amount of HCLs, then we start with two hydrogens and we end with two hydrogens. And so the magnesiums are now balanced, the hydrogens are now balanced. Then we go to the last element, which is chlorine, and you basically ask the same types of questions. How many chlorines are there on the, on the left side of the arrow? Now, for some of you who are uh, not as experienced at looking at these equations, you might say that there's one chlorine. However, this two here means two of the entire molecule here. And because it means two of the entire molecule, not only do we have two hydrogens, we also have two chlorines. So the, uh, it turns out that once we added that two in front of there, it also gave us two chlorine atoms. And then we can ask the question, how many chlorines do we have on the right side of the arrow? And that subscript of two is basically saying that you have two chlorine atoms there as well. So now the magnesiums are balanced, the hydrogen atoms are balanced, and the chlorine atoms are balanced. So the entire equation is balanced. That one was relatively straightforward. We started the equation, and remember, the equation was almost correct, but not quite. We, the equation started as saying one magnesium plus one HCl can make one MgCl2 and one H2. But the real proper way of writing the equation is one magnesium plus two HCl's can make one MgCl2 plus one H2 molecule. And, and so this is the, the more accurate way of writing the chemical equation. So you can ask, uh, aside from torturing chemistry students, why do we bother balancing equations like this? The, the reality is that it's a more accurate description of what's happening. In other words, you're, you're actually accounting for um, all, of, all of the molecules and all of the atoms that you started with and making sure that you end up with the correct number of atoms and molecules that you end up with. It's sort of a more accurate recipe.
if you want to think about it that way, with, with more accurate descriptions of the ingredients. The other thing, however, and you'll see this in, in uh, the following sections, is that once you balance this equation, it allows you to make predictions about how much of certain materials you can make if you know a chemical equation and how much of certain materials you might need to, to, have, uh, to make a certain amount of materials in a chemical equation. And you'll, you'll see that in more detail in the next section. So it allows, uh, uh, maybe this is a better way to, to say it, balancing allows you to compute how much product can be made from a certain amount of reactant. And we'll do some uh, problems related to that, not here, but in the next section. So what I want you to know as far as balancing equations is concerned is the following. I want you to be able to look at a chemical equation and figure out whether it's balanced or not balanced. Um, if it's not balanced, I want you to be able to balance it. And both of these things require a fair amount of practice. So I'll give you um, one more practice exercise in this video, and there are practice problems to do as well from your book. So here, here's a practice problem. Um, this material over here, CH4, is also known as methane gas. Basically, methane gas plus oxygen gas will make carbon dioxide gas and some water under the appropriate conditions. You actually need heat, so I should have put a triangle over here, but um, that, that's not really necessary. The parentheses G's aren't necessary here as well either. So you can try, uh, you can pause the video and, and try to balance this one as well. Um, and then you can resume and I will show you how I would do it. So the way that I would do it again is the same type of thing. I would make a little table, left side of the arrow, right side of the arrow, and then I would go one by one through each element and see if it's balanced, and if it isn't balanced, try to balance it. One thing that students try to do when they start out um, is they try to balance everything at once. And in my experience, at least for me, this causes more headaches than, than it solves. If you, uh, you know, maybe this is a philosophical lesson on life. Uh, my, my attitude as far as this is concerned is solve one problem first and then deal with the other ones later. Don't try to balance the carbons, the hydrogens, and the oxygens all at the same time. So in keeping with that philosophy, I'm going to focus on carbon first. I'm basically going to write letter C for carbon and say and and ask how many carbons do I have on the left side of the arrow looks like I have only one how many do I have on the right side of the arrow looks like only one as well so the carbons are balanced next question let's talk about hydrogen how many hydrogens do I have on the left side of the arrow I start with four hydrogens how many do I end up with on the right side of the arrow looks like um, two hydrogens so the hydrogens aren't balanced. They're, we start with four, we end up with two. So we have to turn this into a four somehow. What's the only way that we, we uh, according to the rules that we've set out, the only way that we can turn this two hydrogens into a four is to double the amount of waters in our chemical reaction. So I'm going to do that here. I'm going to put the number two there. And so now I'm doubling the amount of waters, and that gives us four hydrogens. I think one of the things that bothers students sometimes is they get worried. They say they can see what's going on after they become a little bit experienced and they say, look, um, I changed the amount of hydrogens to four, but I'm also messing with the amount of oxygens here. And maybe that's going to screw something up down the road. Well, it might, it might not. But my, my attitude here is leave it alone and deal with it, um, deal with the oxygen when you get there. In this case, um, we're getting there right now. We're, the, the next and only element that we're going to talk about in this equation is oxygen. So how many oxygens do we start with on the left side of the arrow? Well, looks like we start with two oxygens. So let's put a two here. How many oxygens do we end with on the right side of the arrow? This also requires a fair amount of practice because oxygen, the element oxygen, is in both molecules on the right side of the arrow. There's oxygen here, and there's oxygen here as well. Over in this molecule, we have two oxygens. Over in this molecule here, we also have two oxygens because of this number two here. So two oxygens here, two oxygens here, makes four oxygens. So this isn't balanced as well. We, we start with two oxygens, as the equation is written right now. We end with four. 
So we have to turn this 2 into a 4. And the only way to do that, again, is to change the amount of O2. We don't get to change, um, we don't get to change this to O4 or something like that. We have to assume that the chemist knows that they were actually using O2 gas. So the only number we can change is this number here. To turn this 2 into a 4, we basically insert the number 2 here. We double the amount of O2 that we start with. So there's the number 2. Because of that, we now start with 4 oxygens. And there's the number 4 there as well. So now, as this equation is written here, we start with one oxygen, we end, uh, I'm sorry, we start with one carbon, we end with one carbon. We start with four hydrogens, end with four hydrogens, start with four oxygens, end with four oxygens. So this, as it's written here, with the number two in front of the water and the number two in front of the oxygen gas, um, this is the, uh, the balanced or more accurate description of the chemical equation. One thing I just noticed is that this should be an L for liquid, um, in case you're getting hung up on why we're making uh, steam, we're actually making liquid water, so this should be the letter L. But that's not really relevant to, to practicing balancing equations. Um, so hopefully this makes sense to you. Again, why do we bother balancing these equations? Um, the, the real reason is that uh, putting those numbers in gives you a more, a more accurate description of what's happening. Basically, this equation is saying, if I have one CH4 and mix it with two O2s, I can make one carbon dioxide and two water molecules. And that's a more accurate description of what you need to do, rather than uh, the way this equation was originally written, without the two here and without the two over here.